Following the significant earthquake on August 23rd in 2024, which struck the region near Denman in New South Wales at a magnitude of 4.7, the area has continued to experience notable seismic activity. On August 24th, a new earthquake hit the same region, centred around the Mount Arthur coal mine. Like the quake that occurred in the previous day, it was initially reported as a magnitude 4.7, but was later downgraded to a 4.5. No news stories to my knowledge have reported this new quake, possibly because the depth of it was deeper. The original 4.7 quake on August the 23rd occurred at a depth of 5 kilometers, but this new quake occurred at a depth of 10 kilometers at 4:31 p.m. local time, indicating that the tectonic forces at play are far from settled. In this video we're going to both cover this recent quake and list all the aftershocks before and after it occurred, and we'll also explore the relationship between mining activity and the earthquake. Before this second earthquake, the region experienced a string of aftershocks, suggesting ongoing tectonic adjustments following the main event. These aftershocks, varying in magnitude, began almost immediately after the first earthquake, but we'll be looking at the ones that occurred on the 24th of August. At 12.11am, a magnitude 3.2 at a depth of 5km occurred. At 1.10am, another magnitude 3.2 took place. At 2.26am, a magnitude 2.5 indicated continuing stress release. At 4.57am, another magnitude 2.5 occurred. And at 9.13am, a magnitude 2.5 occurred at a depth of 5km. At 1.06pm, a magnitude 2.7 occurred. At 3.56pm, a magnitude 2.5 occurred just before the main 4.5 magnitude event. These aftershocks are typical in the aftermath of a significant earthquake, as the Earth's crust continues to adjust to the new distribution of stress. Each tremor represents the gradual release of energy as the fault line settles. The magnitude 4.5 quake on August the 24th, though slightly smaller than the first, still posed a significant concern for the region. The fact that it struck at the same location, near Denman, suggests that the fault lines in this area are still under considerable stress. The occurrence of another significant quake so soon after the initial event indicates that this region is undergoing a period of increased seismic activity. The 4.5 quake, which was first reported to be a magnitude 4.7 before being downgraded, occurred at 4.31pm. The depth of it was 10 kilometers. Following the main 4.5 magnitude earthquake, the area continued to experience aftershocks. At 4.43pm, only 12 minutes after the second main event, a magnitude 2.7 aftershock occurred. At 5.33pm, a magnitude 2.6 aftershock occurred. At 10.57pm, another magnitude 2.6 quake occurred. At 3.12am on August 25th, a magnitude 2.3 quake occurred, showing that the seismic activity extended into the next day, which is to be expected. These aftershocks are a natural part of the process as the fault line stabilizes. While smaller in magnitude, they still have the potential to cause further damage to weakened structures and their occurrence keeps the local population on alert. There is a theory suggesting that coal mining activities near the Mount Arthur coal mine might have contributed to the recent earthquake in New South Wales. This idea is based on the concept of induced seismicity, where human activities like mining alter the stress distribution in the Earth's crust. Large-scale coal extraction can create voids and reduce pressure on fault lines, potentially triggering seismic events, especially if the faults are already under pronounced stress. Additionally, water used in mining operations could seep into the ground, increasing pore pressure along fault lines and making them more likely to slip. However, while these mechanisms provide plausible links, most significant earthquakes are primarily driven by natural tectonic processes, such as the movement of the Australian tectonic plate, which accumulates stress over long periods. Thus, establishing a direct cause and effect relationship between mining and the earthquake requires detailed data and analysis, as natural geological forces generally play a more significant role. There have been around 150 earthquake events that have occurred over the past 20 years in the region, with the August 23rd quake being the largest. In the last video I made, I delved into the geology of the seismic activity in New South Wales, particularly around Denman, and I mentioned that it's influenced by the region's complex geological setting. The area is part of the Hunter Valley, which is characterised by various fault lines and a history of tectonic activity. The ongoing movement of the Australian tectonic plate, which is pushing north eastward, contributes to the stress along these faults. Over time, this stress accumulates and can lead to earthquakes as the crust attempts to release the built up energy. The back to back seismic events in New South Wales reminds us of Australia's continued geological activity, even in regions not typically associated with high seismic events. Earthquakes are simply part of the geology here, and they will continue to occur in the near future. 
Just a heads up to regular viewers, I might combine the two videos that I made on these two events over the past two days into a single video. I just thought I'd inform you of that. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.